Audio Jungle. Welcome to yet another episode of the BWP series and we're talking about health this month. Last week you heard us as we went through with Ram Wadamani on immunology and some of the issues that affect the immune system. Still continuing on health, we're here with Dr. Dennis Adu, who's the CEO of Clarion Health International and he'll be sharing with us a little bit about how to live healthy. Welcome, Dr. Doc, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm a physician, Dr. Dennis Ado, physician, a health consultant. Uh, I've had a couple of uh, working experiences all over. I worked in the military as a physician and uh, also an occupational consultant in the Ghana uh, Forces. Also in the United Nations uh, as a medical officer. Experiences as well, and then uh, sort of uh, doing this private stuff. I mean, our goal is to build the biggest healthcare brand in Africa through innovation and creativity. So, I think that was why Clara Health International was born the idea of uh, getting people to live healthy. So, our tagline is to promote health and prolong life. So, anything that we do to get people to live healthy. And we also believe everybody have a right to good quality health care. So in that regard, uh, it's, it's, it's a sacred right that you cannot toy with. So we believe that we have to come out with a series of pragmatic, pragmatic steps that will get people to actually achieve this dream of living healthy. So basically that's a little bit about myself and what, what I, we are doing, sure. Based on your setup I see here, it seems like you're on your way to achieving that international brand. So you, you talked about prolonging life. These days there's a lot of there's a lot of inf information, a lot of communication around the subject that a lot of Ghanaians are dying young, are dying early and that our mortality rate has seriously um, increased. Let, let me ask you this, what is the average lifespan for the average Ghanaian man or woman these days? Okay, so that, that's, that's a good analogy. So, uh, well, let me give some historic perspective. So, I think 10 years ago, the average lifespan of a typical Ghanaian was around about 52 years to 55 years. Now it's gone up to, to about 60 years to 62 years. Uh, it's hovering around that. Figure. Some say 58 years, so others also say 62 years, depending on if you're a man or a woman. The rates are different, but I think uh, it's still quite low compared to a lot of countries, and it can be better. And it's all because uh, of the poor lifestyle that we see in Ghana. Historically, in Ghana, I think our major problems have been infectious diseases, as you can see. That uh, we're talking about malaria, HIV, typhoid, and all these infectious diseases. Ten years, twenty years ago, fifty years ago. Is where the big problem is still a problem. However, we are becoming so westernized. So now, diabetes is really rising. You know, about 10, 20 years ago, diabetes was less than oh, about one percent or less than one percent. Now, diabetes is almost about ten percent of the Ghanaian wow. population. It's a disease of the we used to be, disease of the affluent or western countries. Interesting. Yes, di hypertension, which is a big issue, is on the rise. And the current statistics put more than 42 to 45 percent of the Ghanaian population have hypertension compared to just about, let's say, less than 10 percent about a decade ago. That means within just even about 10 years, we have, I mean, tripled our rate of hypertension. That shows you that in the next decade, we are not going to be talking about HIV, malaria anymore. Our big challenge is going to be uh, these non communicable diseases. Going to be these chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, cancers, which are all rising. Typically, never used to be a problem. So, all these coupled with the fact that we still haven't solved the infectious disease problem makes our lifespan really quite low compared to other countries, and it's still a big challenge. Now, it's interesting that you're saying uh, it's, it's now risen to about 60 65 because, unless I'm wrong, we hear more occurrences of young people, especially around the age of 30, 40 getting diseases that were used to be attributed to people over 50, 60. 
hypertension, heart attacks. Uh, recently, stroke. a friend of mine had a little stroke. Somebody had pancreatic cancer. What's what's attributing to this early misfortune? So, like uh, you know, uh, our elders used to say "siatra," which literally means uh, we are learning and learning all the wrong things as well. So, what is happening is that uh, in our attempt to I mean, become modernized and westernized, we sort of copy blindly. So typically in a Ghanaian home, we used to eat very healthy in the past. You know, people used to go to their farms, they used to eat whatever produce of their farm. We used to eat very green, the cotumbris and all that. But I'm sure you know you have a couple of friends. Almost everybody is used to eating fried rice, jollof, jollof rice, fried chicken. fried chicken and chips. This is, I mean, almost, you get about the youth, if you look at the youth, about 70% of the youth in Ghana would eat these foods as their daily foods. I mean, look at, I mean, all these sugar foods, the coca cola. It, it used to be a once in a while. Exactly, it used to be, you know, that kind of thing. We, our food was our contumbries, our the natural ones, the quince, the all those natural foods that we used to eat in the past. But our taste bars have changed so much that we don't want any of those stuff. Only quick foods that are unhealthy, junk foods, and this is what is happening. And it's also probably attributed to the rapid urbanization. Everybody want to live in the cities. I mean, most of the youth used to be in the villages and towns, but most of the youth now are moving to the cities, and it's so stressful in the cities that. I mean, people are so stressed and they just want to, I mean, get by with anything that comes their way to eat, they just eat it. So it is a lot of stress and a lot of poor diet mainly on top of drinking and all those stuff. People are really, the youth are really living very, very unhealthy and then it's really accounting for a lot of these heart attacks. Even 30 years, 40 years, you're experiencing heart attacks and all that and it's, it's a big worrying sign. Like I've already mentioned, we haven't finished solving our problem with infectious diseases. Now we are compounding the problem with all these chronic diseases, which in quotes we used to see as Western diseases. So it's a big challenge, a big challenge. And if, if, our, if our health plan is not set up, the next 10 years, 20 years, we're going to have a big headache on our heads. In Canada, yes. Now, I don't, um, this is not an anti soda infomercial, but it seems like I noticed a lot of people are now beginning to try to stay away from sodas because they, they, they said it has serious health implications. For young gentlemen and ladies, what type of facts can you give us around, uh, say, drinking a can of Coke or drinking a bottle of Coke or Fanta or Sprite? I mean, what exactly are you doing to your body? Sure, I think, I think you said the premise right, and it's, it's, it's the right premise. I think uh, the challenge is, is about moderation. Everything you do is in moderation. We are not saying don't drink a Coke, don't drink a Fanta or anything. However, there should be a balance. Somebody can go throughout the whole day without even drinking a single bottle of water, but would have drunk about four or five cans of Coke. Now, here are the facts. Every single can of Coke has about 350, 330 mils of Coke contains about 39 grams of sugar that's about uh, about 15 cubes of sugar those small white sugar and then anytime you eat all this the, uh, the recommended allowance of sugar per day for a man should be about 37 grams and a little lower for a woman now if you just a kind of cook can give you more than the recommended amount of calories from sugar in a day so you can imagine that all the foods that you are going to eat on top of it it is it's a big problem. Now the challenge with sugar is that anytime you eat excess sugar, it's converted to fat. And these are stored as what we call adipose tissues. And this makes you quite unhealthy. So the more sugar you eat, the more unhealthy it becomes. Now another trick is that anytime you eat sugar as well, the body must release insulin to sort of mop this sugar from your blood. And the more sugar you eat, with time, I mean, literally, your pancreas can become fatigued, and then these are that's why we are leading to a lot of rise in diseases like diabetes and all. So, sugar itself, it, it, the body needs sugar, but the more sugar you eat, the more you are killing yourself gradually. So, everything in moderation. If people can 
live in a moderated life, less sugar, more water, then it's a balance. But that's the problem we are facing. Most people tend to, anytime they are thirsty, the first thing they think about is sugar. And you're increasing your sugar bars and it becomes unhealthy with them. Yeah. So it's it's my understanding that we we have to nourish our bodies, of course, with water and food. But with food, one, to fuel your body, two, to help with your immune system, build up defenses against whatever diseases may come in, and three, to help with growth. How do we manage this process to ensure that we're maximizing the return from the food and not overdoing it so that it becomes counterproductive? Okay, that's a very good question, Boka. Now we have three main functions of food for any time you eat. The first one is to help you to grow. The second one is to give you energy for whatever work you're doing, going up, up and down, you need food. And the third function of food is for defense against infections. Now, there's an interesting part. After 22 years of age, most of your long bones will have fused. So then, you are not going to grow again. So if you are not tall, after 22 years, you are not going to be tall again because most of your bones would have fused and most of the growth would have taken place. It's just for maintenance and metabolism. So in that case, if you eat excess, then it's all converted to fat and it's stored and becomes unhealthy. I mean, so here's the balance. Whatever goes in must come out. So if you eat excess food, then it's all converted to adipose tissue or fat and it gets you unhealthy. It gets your body unresponsive to a lot of things or stimuli that is going on. So food in, the, in itself is good, but at a certain age, you have to modulate and regulate the food you eat. So you, you probably see parents and fathers and mothers fighting with their kids for their meat and all those stuff. I think it's, it's high time you give the meat to the little kids who are growing. And then you stick to so the base of uh, daddy getting the best meat you know, or the biggest chunks of meat. Exactly. Are long gone. Exactly. 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 Wow. Now let's talk a little bit about um, the environment. A lot of times in the West you see a lot of advertisements around non-fatty food, 0% fat, and then you come back and say, no, this food is actually not fatty. I heard once actually that sometimes what is marketed as non-fatty food is actually fats that the body has not learned to process yet. And sometimes if you indulge too much, the body eventually learns to break them down and then you're in trouble. So how do you avoid all these things? How do you how do you choose what is right for your body? How do you not get into the excess? I think uh, the key the key is the fact that you are there are two types of uh, fats. You have the saturated and the polyunsaturated. So even for full labels, you go to the supermarket, typically you want to look at the label and you are looking out for those that are polyunsaturated. I think the saturated ones and then the animal fats are quite unhealthy and these are the fats that clog up in your system as cholesterol so and also remember that genetically we are different so somebody's maybe somebody may be able to metabolize fats at a quicker rate than another person so the rule may not apply but overall and in general the it's the golden rule is to avoid eating as much fat as possible because the more fat you eat the more it clogs your arteries and your blood vessels and the more you get to these heart problems and the strokes that we've talked about so if you, if you can avoid them and look at the food label look for foods that are oils that are poly unsaturated so something like canola oil it's quite healthy and then uh, olive oil but olive oil is the best i know it's very expensive but you can use a lot of olive oil and pro prevent the animal or animal based fat oils and all i think it's healthy overall as a golden rule the plant-based oils are much healthier compared to the animal based ones and even for the plant-based some are more healthier so in the order of ranking you're looking at the canola oils the sunflower oils and then the olive oil of course on top as a more healthy kind of fat that you need to be promote good cholesterol and reduce bad cholesterol in your system sure. beautiful now let's talk about some myth busters sure first and foremost eggs are the high source of cholesterol it's been back and forth since mm -hmm. time immemorial eggs are good they're not good eggs are good they're not good let's also talk about microwaves <laughs> microwaves give cancer microwaves give uh, your food cancer if you eat too much food from microwaves you'll get cancer uh, uh, a last one is um, 
plastics. Sure. Uh, you have food in plastics, you leave them in a the car, they get contaminated. Tell me a little bit about this. Sure. So let me let me start with the, the egg. I'm mm -hmm. sure, I mean, if you are probably have read about the research that came out last year to say that, oh, now people can eat eggs and all. So I think in the past, what, uh, what the research at that time was that more people who eat more legs have a lot of heart risk problems and all. But later they came out to school that there were a lot of other factors that were not accounted for. So they generalized to say that eggs in general is not good. However, what is coming out is that, you know, the yolk of the egg really contains a lot of bad cholesterol. So what you want to be doing is to probably avoid eating the yolk of the egg as much as possible. I mean, first they used to say you can eat about two eggs a day, three days. There's no restrictions. I mean, as many eggs that you want to eat. But as long as you are not eating the yolk as much, from my perspective, I think it's much better because so egg whites. exactly the egg white that's a protein part. It's quite healthy. And for of course for kids and children who are growing up, I mean they need a lot of this stuff because they are burning energy and all that. I mean, as you are old, you really burn little as well, and that's a challenge that we typically have. Now coming to the microwave, I think it's been a myth that has been disproved by science a lot. I'm sure you know about the the the, the mobile phone. It was also the same problems, but the the, the something I call the electromagnetic spectrum. It, uh, it measures the wavelength and frequency of lights that all these uh, waves are found in. So, for instance, we start from the the normal light wave. We have the microwave, and then go down to the gamma radiation, the X-ray, and all that. Now, microwave is found is even much lower frequency than the normal light wave that you see, that's the normal sunlight. Mm. Even normal light, sunlight, the frequency or the wavelength is quite bigger compared to the, the waves that are really from the microwave. So there's absolutely no truth to the fact that microwaves cause cancer. You know, most of the research have disproved this theory uh, or this myth. So microwaves are extremely safe and quite safe. So until anything else comes to disprove it, I think microwaves are quite good and then we I don't know about the third one that you are asking. Uh, plastics, you said if you leave uh, exactly. plastics around. So that one too has been, has been debunked. I know there are a lot of uh, myths about plastics and all those things. I mean, generally, they are fine. I mean, as long as they are clean and hygienic and all, there's no problem. Probably maybe what people were concerned about, how people, I mean, you know, people leave food in plastic for so long. People also put plastics around food and microwave and as well. That's where the challenge But if you leave, Using your normal plastic bowls, and I don't think there's any issue or problem with that at all. And uh, let's also talk about overcooking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which takes us to vegetables sure. and, 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 sure. and the positives and negatives. Okay. So, sometimes you want your food to taste good, you know, you don't want it raw. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the concept conception is if you overcook it or if you cook it, you start killing the nutrients yeah. and then it has no more value for the body. That, that, that's, that's absolutely true and uh, you know the, 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 the basic in, uh, nutrition we get from food, we have the vitamins and the minerals and all those ones. Now they are, they are denatured or destroyed at a certain temperature. So the more you cook the, the vegetables, the, the more you destroy them. That's why if people are advocated to eat fresh, but you know most people also love to eat these carrots and the cucumbers they cut them fresh they wash them and eat them it's more healthy if you can but if you want to boil them make sure you don't over boil it and even the water that it's it comes from the boiling can still be used for cooking because it's, most of the nutrients we probably have drained into it as well so it's, it's, it's a good point and you have to make sure that you are not overcooking the vegetable the more you overcook it the less healthy they are as well so it's a very good point it's a very valid I as well. sure. Now talking about vegetable, let, let's talk about vegetable oils. Mm -hmm. Are they all healthy? Not at all. Like I, I explained earlier, the, the the most healthy vegetable oils you want to eat are the olive oils olive oil. because they promote good cholesterol. Okay. They what we call HDL cholesterol. They promote yeah. most of it, and they suck away the, all the bad cholesterol okay. from your blood into the liver. Okay. And then these other oils. Uh, other skill, other plant oils may not have the same capacity as these olive oil, canola oil, and sunflower oil. So if you if you really only leave oil, uh, eat good oil and live healthy, 
and this probably will be your best bet to start with and then you will prepare right up to the other ones as well. Sure. Let's talk about time of the day. Uh, when some people are trying to lose weight or be a bit healthy, they say, hey, you know, I don't eat after five, I don't eat after six. Others just say, oh, if you're going to eat, eat something light. Sure. Should you totally eradicate a dinner or should you try to focus on lighter foods and what type of food specifically? Sure, I think that's, that's a very good question. I think as a rule of thumb, uh, it's better you eat breakfast. I mean, that's what they say, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And I think the logic behind it is that you may be going throughout the whole day and you might not get time to eat. The problem with eating is that if your taste buds are activated or if your hunger centers are activated in the brain, then you have a desire to eat and eat more. So typically for Ghanaians, when we don't eat breakfast, then we say we have to balance it in the lunch. So we eat so much, we have a very heavy lunch. And when you eat so much in the afternoon, what happens is that you have three effects. Your, your brain becomes dull, digestion is impeded, and even if you sit in your office, you realize that you, you, you doze off because you're eating so much, you are giving the body excess work to do. So that's a challenge. If you don't eat a good breakfast, then you are forced to eat an extremely yeah, heavy lunch, lunch mm -hmm. and then it's unhealthy as well. Digestion is impeded. Now for dinner, if you can avoid it, it's all the better. Like I said, after a certain age, you don't eat need food for, for so long. But the general rule that we always advise people is that don't eat heavy after six. Because after six, you are not active. Most people, after eating in the evening, just go to bed. Because, I mean, you are not active, you are watching TV, you do so. And that's what gets people's tummy to be big, apart from the, of course, the beer and other stuff. So, the golden rule of thumb is that you are not going to be active in the evening, don't eat so much. The more you eat, the, the, the less likely. If you are going to be active, you are going to burn it. That's fine. But we, we all know that most of us don't burn the food. We just go straight to bed after eating and it's extremely unhealthy. So if you are going to eat in the evening, it's extremely light food. You can get some green tea, light, amilo, cream crackers, salad, anything light that you know you can easily burn from the time you eat to the time you go to bed. It's, it's, it's absolutely good. So it's important. If you can avoid dinner, it's good. But if you can't avoid it, make sure that you're not eating any heavy food. You're not know, typical Ghanaian. 10 p.m. people are going to eat back food and food stuff. You know that. I mean, you are killing yourself. Right? What about, and, and this is probably part of my problem, those of us who don't eat by, we don't eat after 5 and sometime at 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden we are hungry and we, we can't sleep. We need to go find something to grab. Exactly. And that, that's where the challenge is because, okay. I mean, at that time, if you are going to be active throughout the whole night or morning, that's mm -hmm. fine. But I mean, you just you just will definitely go back to sleep, and the food will not be well digested. Exactly. So why don't you get some green tea and some crackers, something light, okay. which is healthy as well. Or just a yeah. salad, some green stuff. At least you know you are eating healthy, and you are suppressing the the hunger, and at the same time eating healthy. The challenge is we eat very heavy. I mean, when when we when we activate, and the body learns whatever whatever habit you do, the body learns. So we have the, the learning centers in the brain. Whatever habits you do, it learns. And the next time you're hungry, to tell you to do the same thing. So habits are learned. That's why it's difficult to break bad habits. So whatever you start with, the body learns. And any time you are presented with the same situation, that's the picture that comes to your mind. So it's, it's, it's important you learn these good habits right from the start. And then you start living healthy before you become a bad habit. Sure. Interesting. They say an apple a day. Keeps doctors like yourself away. Can you elaborate on that as we wrap up? Yes, I mean for me, for me that's that's uh, that's one of the the, the mantras of good. I mean, at Claron, all we do is to promote health and prolong life. And if anything that we can do to do that, we do. So apples are and, and fruits in general are quite healthy. So I think. The, 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 the mantra didn't necessarily say just go and eat only apples also, but the idea is that at least every meal you should have a serving of food. A serving means even if you take a, one finger of banana, it's a serving, isn't it? So one apple is a serving. So typical Ghanaians, we don't eat fruits. I mean, the last thing, but if you, every healthy meal, there should be a food component. At least some berries, 
some bananas, some watermelons, some pineapple, just a little one on top of it, so that you are getting all the nutrients in the food. It becomes a balanced diet. So every balance that might have carbohydrate, protein, vitamins and minerals, and the food specifically gives most of the vitamins and minerals. Sure. Okay. Well, thanks for being with us, Doc. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking about something you'll all find very fascinating sex and how it affects our life uh, as young people as uh, healthy people we'll go into it with uh, dr abdul again stay empowered